Hi there, today we're going to go over how to rank up your island to rank 5 as well as all that goes in between the ranks that can be kind of missable if you're not searching around. And I don't mean missable in the sense of never being able to do it, but missable in the sense of you don't realize you have to do it. You can treat this kind of like a roadmap guide. Rank 1 is pretty straightforward as you'll be doing the tutorial. The tutorial is going to show you how to gather, how to craft, expand your pasture and crops. The base function of Island Sanctuary at these levels is going to be gathering, which you'll be doing a lot of. After this video, you can watch the 7 tips and tricks video as well as the plethora of other island sanctuary guides I have in my island sanctuary playlist. During rank 1, you'll basically be making your cozy cabin which is going to be home base for you. Once you complete this objective, congrats, you're rank 2. Before we go on, you'll always want to prioritize building things since it gives you a crap ton of XP. So make sure you're always checking your buildings or hideaway management box to see if anything can be upgraded as that's gonna be huge amounts of experience. Rank two, when you hit rank two, you'll see another marker or continuation of the tutorial, which is where you're gonna expand your land for your garden. This will allow you to plant crops, which are limited at this point, and you'll be able to water them. You'll want to plant these pretty early on. It seems to take quite a while for you to be able to collect these. You will have to water these if they dry out, but they also get watered from the rain on your island, which seems to be pretty often at this point. So just check them every day or so and water them so they don't dry out. After getting the croplands open, you'll see another quest marker. This is going to be your pasture and it will teach you on how to capture enemies, or I should say monsters. Pets? What are we calling them in Island Sanctuary? When you unlock the pastures, it will allow you to collect monsters out in the wild. At this time, you have a makeshift net, so you'll be able to capture the Opa Opo, Lost Sheep, Coblin, and the Penguin at the back of the beach areas. It is RNG whether you can catch them or not, so you'll just have to keep trying until you capture them. You want to make sure when you capture them that you go back and feed them to increase their mood, which you can make feed by using the apples that you probably have harvested. Each day, these will give you things that you can use in your workshop along with the items you gathered, which is why you want to fill the pasture up pretty quickly. This will allow for a wider range of items for the workshop, and no petting does nothing for the pets or monsters other than make you happy. The things they give you can not only be used for the workshop, but also be turned in for blue currency. So this can really pay out in the long run, and it seems blue currency is hard to come by at lower levels, so I wouldn't turn any of the stuff into blue currency, I would use it for the workshop instead as it seems to have more bang for your buck. Now another big tip here is every time you rank up, make sure you're checking your crafting and gathering log because you might miss some stuff that you'll be able to have access to that they don't really point out too easily. The better mammoth tools are always for expanding, so you want to make sure to make those whenever you have the chance, which is rank 3, 5, and 7. Once you are rank 3, you'll be able to make the stone hammer, which will allow you to collect new materials from rock nodes, mainly the iron copper ore that we'll need for a lot of different stuff. I will have some farming root guides in my island sanctuary playlist that you can check out in the description box. You will want to prioritize building these two workshops that you can put up and get them running because this is what's going to give you a lot of experience points in the long run. These workshops can be daunting at first, but we'll go over them in a different video. I will do a little bit of an explanation here though. Now this is where things start moving and grooving. No pun intended. You'll get a tutorial about the workshop and how to use it. You can basically think of this as retainer ventures, except less hours and it gives you blue currency in return. They can be a little complicated, but basically you'll have a full season, aka a week in real time, and a cycle, aka a day in real time. Each cycle or day, you can schedule different crafts to start. Each craft takes up a different amount of hours of that day starting 4 and 6 at the very beginning. The main strategy here is to craft as many items as possible without repeating the items and getting the efficiency bonus, which comes from crafting from the same category. Let's take iron, fire, sand, and potions for this example. Both of these are categorized as concoctions. When you assign one to the schedule, the next one should be the same category, which will give you the efficiency bonus. This efficiency bonus means that the item will make two of that item instead of one for the same amount of materials. So basically you'll get more profits, which means more blue currency. So as you can see, I scheduled an Isles Work Potion, then Isles Work Fire Sand, which gets the efficiency bonus. I then schedule another Iron Works Potion for another efficiency bonus. You can also chain these to vastly multiply your workshop earnings. But the efficiency bonuses are only for that day or cycle. 
cycle. They do not carry over. They will reset every day, which means you need to make sure to plan out the workshop the day before to maximize the earnings and getting started at 1 a.m. in the morning or whenever your time is for your time zone. I am in California, so my reset time is 1 a.m., which is pretty crappy. The efficiency bonus doesn't only give you bonus items, but it also increases your groove, which is this little stat here to the top right. High groove scores will increase your profits when turning in the handicrafts, and this applies to the season or the week. So efficiency bonuses are only for the day or cycle, and groove bonuses are for the entire week or season. If you can put two and two together, that means you want to get your groove score up as quickly as possible in the beginning of the week in order to maximize the profits for the entire week or season. You can increase the cap of your groove with more landmarks on your island. This is all I'm going to cover for workshop as it's way more in depth and I want to make a separate video for that as more information comes out. Now you are rank 4 and you have new crafting recipes as well as able to upgrade your main cabin to level 2, crops and pastures to level 2, the crop and pastures will need a thousand blue calories each, so that's why you should not spend them in the beginning or you're going to be behind on updating your island. And you'll have to wait to get more blue currency from the workshop. After doing everything above, you'll probably be around halfway or a little more to level five. This is where the grind comes in and you'll be gathering for the rest of those levels. It doesn't take as long as it looks, maybe an hour or more or so of straight gathering, or you can wait for your workshop items to finish up, which will give you some experience as well every day. If you're taking things slow, you'll probably just rank up from the workshops after they finish every few hours, from your animal leavings that give you 50 XP from each, which is why you wanna fill that pasture right away. Now that we are at rank five, we have a lot to do and upgrade. We get a new shovel tool, new mammoth tools for expansion, two more facility slots, and another landmark spot. I want to say for those new landmark spots, you are able to build a bathhouse which needs clams. You can get those by diving underwater on the sides or tops of the island. Many people are having trouble with this, but it's O or B on controller and space or control on keyboard. With this, you'll have a lot to do in a lock, so you'll just need to keep on gathering to level up and getting your workshops going. I will put out a guide for rank 6 to 10, which is the current max rank as well. This is just supposed to be at your own pace content, so keep trudging along. I hope this kind of helps clarify what you can do at each rank and how to progress forward. If you got any value out of this video, make sure to limit break through that sub and like button down below. And if you want to watch more Island Sanctuary guides and tutorials, then you can click here.